actor, director, leftist activist, like this scold on Twitter and elsewhere, should add hypocrite and con artists to his name. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Declaration of Truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. And I hope you fellow Americans remember to set your clocks ahead one hour last night. Otherwise, it's later than you think. But I digress. Yesterday morning, a now prominent Twitter user, drawing inspiration from journalists like Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger, dropped an embarrassing thread about Rod Reiner. According to it, Rod Reiner has a decidedly checkered past involving misuse of taxpayers' funds. In short, government program embezzlement. But worse than that, he collaborated with the most dangerous financier in the world, George Soros. I'm going to give you all a refresher on Rod Reiner's history, <coughs> much of which takes takes me back to my junior high school days. There, see how I date myself? That's what we used to call it back then. And then I'm going to dissect and discuss the thread. Before I do, I want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. And be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there, especially this t-shirt that I've chosen for today, which reads, Thanks for the free trial of communism, but I'd like to cancel. Why that? Because the one thing about which Rob Reiner has been consistent all his life is his advocacy of communism. One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also click the bell icon every time uh, to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon? So, uh, heart shape with the U.S. dollar sign in it? Super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do, so long as it's legal tender. Now, now first, a review. Who is Rob Reiner? Rod Reiner is the son of Carl Reiner, the, an actor with many motion picture and television credits. Perhaps the elder Reiner's most famous is his appearance as struggling television writer Walt Whitaker in, in the 1966 film, The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming. Five years later, the younger Reiner would land his breakout role as Michael Stivick in Norman Lear's All in the Family. In fact, Ron Reiner twice won the Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Comedy Actor for that role. I have a link in the description to a four and a half minute clip from the episode recalling Michael Stivick's meeting Archie Bunker for the first time. And yes, that's when Archie first tagged him with that name. Hold that thought. Because at the end of this video, I want to tell you whether I think the name fits or not. Just wait. In 1984, Rob Reiner directed his first film, This is Spinal Tap, a pretend documentary about a totally factitious heavy metal band. And that project probably defines his career today. In entertainment and in politics, for Rod Reiner spends his time in a world of make-believe. Make-believe that a heavy metal band that never existed did exist and hired him to tell their story. Make-believe that the crudest president ever elected is an unblemished hero of the people, as he did in his 2017 film, LBJ. And now, make-believe that socialism works. And anyone who says otherwise is lying. But most of all, make believe that you are never guilty, no matter how guilty you might be, of breaking the law in ways you accuse others of breaking it. Surely he must have read Solovinsky's Rules for Radicals in his spare time. Well, yesterday somebody finally called him out on putting those uh, rules into practice. After, the, after this, <coughs> no one should take Rob Reiner seriously ever again. The thread comes from Dom Luker, Breaker of Narratives. He actually 
pre-announced the thread the night before last, close to midnight. I have a link in the description to his teaser tweet saying that he can prove that Rob Reiner works with George Soros and asking in so many words, when, he, when has he ever failed to produce the receipts, which is the new phrase for documentary proof of what someone has to say. Then, yesterday morning, he dropped the main thread, 19 tweets of it. I have the links in the description to 10 of them, the anchor tweet and every other tweet after that. So, here we go. And remember, Dom Luker's tweets are always ironic, and the first tweet generally means the opposite of what it really said, of what it says. So, threat. Proof that Rob Reiner is about to send Donald Trump to jail. Ha ha. On March 30th, 2006, Hollywood director Rob Reiner stepped down as chairman of a state early education commission amid allegations of possible misuse of taxpayer funds for a June ballot initiative he was spearheading. He also stepped down from several other organizations as well. Rob Reiner also received accusations that he violated a state ban when he diverted taxpayer dollars from First Five, an unelected commission, to promote children's health, the mission to promote children's health that he had it for six years, which forced him to step down in 2006. It appears that Rob Reiner has been working with children for over 30 years and was able to make, gain a fortune by placing the word child in front of documents to possibly cover the true nature of his legislation. Now, the tweet here links to a PDF of his testimony before the United States Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions, February 12, 2002. Moving on. First Five received $800 million, about 20%, about 20 of the tobacco proceeds that Mr. Reiner convinced California voters to impose on themselves in a 1998 referendum. Of this, the commission has awarded contracts totaling about $200 30 million dollars to firms or individuals known to Mr. Reiner. Reiner had refused for weeks to resign as chairman of the first five California Children and Families Commission after it was revealed uh, that he used 23 million dollars in commission funds for advertising on behalf of a ballot initiative to create universal preschool for California. You would think someone who was accused of stealing funds that were supposed to go to children would stay far away from kids moving forward. But a certain California education directory has Rob Reiner on its list, and it was updated on August 30th, 2020. Reiner was one of the most vocal, uh, August 13th, 2020. Reiner was one of the most vocal liberals about Trump's taxes. So it's strange that he doesn't bring up his history with voter taxes, especially since his Proposition 10 in 1998 created the largest increase in smoke taxes for California to date. Now here he embeds video of Rod, Rod Ryder speaking to the City Club on September 30th, 2005. Reiner has also been an avid critic on the transparency of President Trump's documents and emails, including the September 20. Uh, uh, 2022 Mar-a-Lago raid. So, it is ironic that Rob Reiner was accused on March 20th, 2010, uh, 2010 of <coughs> avoiding a due criminal probe by deleting emails. After being disgraced when he worked uh, in California politics, Reiner had to find a new way to profit and possibly co commit tax fraud. This is where George Soros and the New Democratic Party marketing approach come in slander and censorship. On March 22, 2019, it was revealed that Rob Reiner, a man who might be the most consistent critic of Donald Trump, is funding the Democracy Integrity Project, TDIP, I want to pronounce it TDIP, with billionaire liberal investor George Soros. TDIP is closed in, cloaked in mystery, but real clear investigations studied documents and conducted more than a dozen interviews and determined 
that the group, in implementing a comprehensive media influence effort, that includes driving and controlling daily coverage of the Russia conspiracy. On February 17, 2018, Ron Reiner joined Tucker Carlson on Fox News and refused to answer simple questions. Yet he continued to accuse Trump of collusion. Notice in the start of the video how Rob never responded when asked whether the Russians had more authority in America than China. Rod Reiner is a board member of American Foundation for Equal Rights, whose advisory board includes John Podesta and John Levy of the Cato Institute with ties to George Soros. Now, as an aside, I would advise the Cato Institute to look into that association. Moving on. This creates the second jo Soros Reiner link after TDIP. It seems Reiner has truly been invested in Trump. This is certainly not the first time the media has collaborated with the government or representatives in order to manipulate opinion and thought. The most perverse use was the 1950s to the 1970s when Alan Dulles, then director of the Central Intelligence Agency, instituted Operation Mockingbird. By the way, uh, CNAV contributor Bradley Dean insists that Operation Mockingbird never stood down and is still active. Moving on. Rob Reiner also directed the LBJ movie in 2016. He claimed that Lyndon B. Johnson is one of his favorite presidents. Numerous recordings and documents state LBJ was racist. That includes a December 15, 2022 CIA JFK file statement that claimed Johnson was a possible member of the Ku Klux Klan. Here is a clip of one of the one of Rob Reiner's favorite presidents, Lyndon B. Johnson, saying a certain saying a certain unsavory slur on black people, and disrespecting Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. ABC News covered this story on September 24, 1999. I'll have more to say about that later on. <clears throat> Rob Reiner and Soros lead the attempt led the attempt not only to overturn the election, but also to get the Electoral College overturned. Why can't conservative citizens question the election, but celebrities and billionaires get to while censoring and, uh, and banning the objections? Say no to Trump derangement syndrome. Patriots, you keep me motivated in ways that I have yet to put into words. Please let me know what you liked, learned, or did not. I am 100% independent. I stopped expanding my business to maintain this. All of my threads and donation information will be below. End of thread. Now, that's quite a jarring thread, but every part of it is a matter of public record. I'm going to discuss one element of it in particular about that LBJ movie. But first, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You are not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the last few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Alliance helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides, either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you can build a legacy for your future. Now, I would add that that is doubly important given the failure of the Silicon Valley Bank. I digress. This thread tells very little that diligent researchers could not find, uh, find out for themselves. The problem is, most people don't. Or when some, So when someone like Dom Lucre put, pulls it all together into one place, of course it's jarring. Rob Reiner's film LBJ is a booby prize example. Everyone who cared to know knew that Lyndon Baines Cornpone Johnson 
was one of the crudest presidents ever elected. As you heard, Dom Luker has raw footage from an ABC News story about Johnson's conduct while election returns were rolling in, in which not only does he use what is now the worst word you can use to refer to black people, but also, and I think this is an order of magnitude worse, praises this political operative by saying that he was teaching black people how to vote. How patronizing can you get? And then, this same man turns around and talks to community leaders of that race, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and turns on the charm. That should tell you two things. First, well, do any of you out there remember a film titled The Hunt for Red October, released in 1990? I certainly do. Well, there's a scene in which actor Richard Jordan, as Jeffrey Pelt, the National Security Advisor, is talking to Alec Baldwin, who is portraying Jack Ryan, the ace CIA operative of this and many other adaptations of Tom Clancy's novels. And here Mr. Jordan says a classic line about politicians. Talking about himself, he grins somewhat ironically and says, quote, I'm a politician, which means I'm a cheat and a liar. And when I'm not kissing babies, I'm stealing their lollipops. Close quote. Now, that's the first thing. The second is to beware of anyone, especially a politician, who turns on the charm. Chances are it's a false front. And small wonder, therefore, that some of us find charm highly overrated. The salient point, however, is this. Rob Reiner presented a false hagiography of Johnson in his film LBJ. I told you before, Rob Reiner spends his time in the world of make-believe. So now he regularly on Twitter makes believe that Donald J. Trump is the worst criminal to be elected president. Scarcely a day goes by that he does not issue a tweet to that effect. But let no one say, say anything against Johnson or Biden today, which is why I, until now, have ignored him. Now, the reaction. Most of the reaction was positive, with appreciation to Mr. Lucre for the story behind Rob Reiner and his campaign. Perhaps one user tried to hold up uh, Reiner's favorite narrative against Trump. I have a link to it in the description, so that when you follow the link, you can then look at the replies. The user says, quote, no bigger criminal than Donald Trump, close quote. That's it. As if Jeffrey Epstein was a lesser criminal. Well, most of the replies this user got either chastised him for Trump derangement syndrome or shared damaging information about President Biden. And all of the tweets he got, all the replies were negative. Now, a few users made some allegations against Rob Reiner that went beyond what Dom Luca revealed. They are probably not worth repeating unless and until someone in authority is ready to indict him on their account. But in the first four hours since the thread dropped, no one, except for that one user, had anything sympathetic to say about Rob Reiner. And even then, uh, and even he confused, confirmed, uh, <coughs> combined himself to saying, but Trump. And that, and that tweet, as you have seen, was pretty lame. Now, my analysis. In his breakout role, Rob Reiner took many insults from his acting colleague, Carol O'Connor. The most common one, of course, was that name, a word that stands for a stupid or dull person. I won't repeat it here. Why not? Because, and I'm sure I'm going to surprise you, the name doesn't fit. Rob Reiner is neither stupid nor dull, and if he were, that might almost excuse his attitudes, but it can neither excuse nor explain his behavior. Stupid men do not, indeed could not, embezzle millions of dollars in taxpayer funds to pay off their friends or to finance other campaigns the taxpayers never bargained for, as he did, which makes him clever, though perhaps too clever by half fits the bill. Definitely is hypocritical and a true radical, obeying one of Solovitsky's cardinal rules, which is always accuse your opponent of that which you yourself do. He cuts a truly pathetic picture on Twitter. I will leave no links in the description to any tweet by him. I do not wish to give him that satisfaction, especially since 
They all all make the same pitch. Donald Trump is a criminal. Why won't authorities do their job and indict him? Aha! Uh -huh, he won't skate this time. On and on and on. <laughs> and now he turns out to be either a venal shakedown artist or worse, someone who lends new meaning to the phrase public funding of political campaigns. For his embezzlement seemed to have been not so much for pecuniary grain, with maybe one or two exceptions, as to make taxpayers fund his leftist politics without ever knowing it. He's also intellectually dishonest and guilty of the logical fallacy of special pleading. The most striking irony might be this. Throughout his career, he advocated for something loosely called Russia, when it was actually called Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was a different country. The Soviet Union was the original communist country declaring bondage of all to all to which you owned nothing and they insisted you were happy. I remember when Russian tanks invaded Poland and wondered how Michael Stivik, had he been a real person, would have felt about that. I was in medical school at the time and several times I toyed with the notion of batting out an essay on my typewriter. Yes, I said typewriter. They still had them in those days because personal computers wouldn't make the scene until years later. And posting that essay to a bulletin board. And I would have titled that essay, Are You Watching Michael Stivik? But of course, nobody in medical school had that, had that, has that kind of time. And back then, I had the impression that I was surrounded by a class of Michael and Gloria Stivics who wouldn't have begun to understand. Well, today, the Soviet Union is no more. And now, Rod Reiner accuses a president of colluding with post-Soviet Russia. He has never explained that irony, and he also has much else to explain, such as, Where is the money? Where did you spend it? Why couldn't you at least be honest enough to admit that Lyndon Baines Johnson had a considerable number of figurative warts? And where do you get off telling even a sympathetic Attorney General of the United States what to do? When you do the same things yourself, whereof you accuse another person. Links in the description of the article to the video of Mike meeting Archie for the first time to Don Luker's teaser, to the thread, to the one negative tweet in reaction, to my Declarations of Truth Twitter account, and to Conservative News and Views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to rsilverlines.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel and links to the Mar-a-Lago raid file, since Rob Reiner is so obsessed with that, and to my Jane Fonda video, and to that, uh, and to that video of Mike beating Archie for the first time. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another Declaration of Truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.